Hello and welcome to Devin's Workshop. Today we will be talking about audio. Snap, crackle, and pop, hiss, and hum of audio issues. So here is a DIY um, clear mailbox, and the flag just comes off right there. Uh, I made out of PETG on my 3D printer, and it opens up on both sides with uh, speakers. It's got speaker ports in there. So this is a male boombox. And I was having some serious issues with the quality of sound. So inside we have a, an ESP32 coupled to a LoRa RFM95 uh, antenna, uh, which go, the audio goes out to an IE2S module that I'm using as a preamp to go into a 20 watt Adafruit uh, amplifier. And that's powering these two 10 watt speakers and I was getting really horrible audio and I couldn't figure out why. So here's the main piece that's going in the mailbox. This is going to be a transmitter. It's a transceiver actually so it can do both um, but this is just to notify me of new mail. An identical one of these is going in the mailbox outside so this is going to be a mailbox notifier. So at first I thought that the ESP32 which is the one on top here was just putting out garbled sound from the i2s uh, out and as you can see it's all connected via breadboard pin headers since i couldn't figure out what my issue was i decided to do just a smaller scale mock-up and this is an adafruit uh, very pretty pink rp2040 feather and that's going out to an i2s module and i2s is a digital sound protocol so instead of like I2C or SPY, I2S is specifically for audio. And it converts a digital audio signal from, well, in this case, I have an audio file on the flash chip itself. This has, I think, 8 megabytes of flash. And the files I'm playing are like 1 megabyte each. It's got plenty of space on board to store a couple of songs. So that's digitally going out to the I2S module, which converts it to an analog. That's how you hear the sound from analog. So here's my test code. Uh, and this is based off of JP's walk M person. I've kind of modified it just for a very basic MP3 out demo using an I2S module. Very, very small, bare bones. So if it doesn't work at this stage, it's not going to work scaled up, which is kind of what the problem was, is that I scaled it up to this massive 20 watt mailbox and the audio just wasn't quite right. So I'm playing the Bartle Beats, which is uh, from Adafruit. So the Adafruit RP2040 has two pins that are right next to each other. In this case, it's 24 and 25 that I'm using, but you could use any two sequential pins for word select and for clock. Those two have to be next to each other. LRC is the brown and bit clock is the red. So on this one, we've got brown and red right next to each other. And then the orange wire goes to DN, which is basically data. And you can put that pin anywhere you want, really. And the point of this is the RP2040 will not let you put the LRC and the bit clock on pins that are not next to each other. And it has to be lower to higher. So you have to have like 24 then 25 or, or 18 then 19. It can't be 25 then 24. It has to be 24 then 25. Not only do they have to be sequential, they have to be in a very specific order of which one is which. Then you get audio out on your I2S. So sound demo, and I will just uh, hit Control S. Uh, actually, I'll just go up here and save. That way you can see what I'm doing. I'll hit save, and that will restart the sketch or the code. If you listen real carefully, you can hear how scratchy that is. So there's a lot of popping and clicking and hissing. If you hold it in just the right spot, you'll get super clean audio. Which and that is because I'm I'm making sure that it's it's on there really really well, especially the ground side.
audio quality. And that just has to do with this ground connection on the I2S module. Terminal blocks that Adafruit is using are inadequate. They just don't make good connection. If you have this issue, it's a much better idea to not install these terminal blocks and just solder the wires in place. And if you're thinking, well, that d doesn't really help for modularity, then use breadboard wires. Use, use some kind of you know jumper wire. Solder those down in there so that you can still hook up whatever you want with your speakers using the, the terminals. Because these kind of terminals, these jumper header terminals, will supply a better um, overall ground connection than whatever these terminal blocks are providing, which is practically, practically nothing. They're extremely thin terminal blocks. So I think I've narrowed down what the main issue is for people that are complaining about pops, hiss, clicking, crackling. It's just because of the physical connection, especially the ground side. Um, I don't have any problem with the positive side. It's just the ground side. And if you're thinking, well, maybe it's just my soldering job. No, they, I've tried this with three different modules. I have a lot of audio projects, so I bought three of these. Okay, it this happens on every single I2S module that uses those terminal blocks. And you take away the terminal blocks and you hard solder it in place and you get crystal clear, really crisp audio. It sounds great. Yeah, to anyone running into this issue, especially for I2S, because I'm going to label this video I2S, because this is a very, very common issue. Uh, and it should be included in Adafruit's FAQ, uh, which I don't think they adequately addressed, is that it's... It's actually coming from their module. I hate to say it, but that's that's a, a design flaw. It's not Lady Ada's fault. It's the fault of the terminal blocks that she chose. I don't think there's better terminal blocks for this size out there either. I honestly think that they should just not include the terminal blocks and include standard headers instead. Jumper headers are better than these terminal blocks. These terminal blocks, they, they got to go. They're not working out. So now that I've figured that out, I'm free to move on to the next step. <laughs> Clear audio. <laughs> so now that I've figured out this issue, uh, it's not the board. And it, it's just the I2S module. I'm going to send this video to Adafruit, and hopefully they can uh, take a look into these connections and just do away with them. That, that's my recommendation. Or figure out some other solution because this this is just not happening this is not that's not it's actually going to end up causing Adafruit more problems than it solves because there's going to be so many people coming back saying I've got you know static and pops and clicks and hiss and even if it's PWM which is less quality than I2S I2S is crystal clear I wasn't getting crystal clear audio with I2S which is what led me down this rabbit hole and yeah, it's just it's it's a little disappointing when things just don't work how you, how you want, you know, right out of the box. So that's all I got, and uh, I hope that helps uh, some people out there with I2S issues. It has nothing to do with solder, has nothing to do with cold solder joints. The thin terminal material um, that's being used, and it doesn't matter how large of a wire you use in there, because I'm using some pretty large gauge hookup wire, comparatively speaking to breadboard wire, and still getting. Uh, pops and clicks and hisses. It's very temperamental connector and um, don't like it. Don't recommend it. That's it. I'm out. Have a good day.